Have you ever seen this before? It's not the same as two factorial. Let me explain. But first, let's remind ourselves of factorials. When you take the factorial of a positive integer, you take that integer and multiply it by the integers that precede it down to one. In this case, we're taking two and multiplying it by the integer that precedes it, which is one, we get two. Now this tells us the number of different ways of arranging two unique objects. For example, if I have the letters A, B, what's the other way of arranging that? You can only have B, A. There's two different arrangements. This is known as a subfactorial, and a subfactorial tells us the number of D arrangements for a set of unique objects. A D arrangement is the number of permutations whereby each object is not in the same position as the original set. Let's take a look at a set of two unique objects, A, B. The only other way of arranging these objects is B, A. B is not in the same position as the original set. So there is only one way of arranging our objects so that each object is not in the same position. So the answer here is one. Let's take a look at subfactorial three. We have three unique objects, A, B, C, and here I've listed all the different permutations of those three objects. Now to find the dearrangements, all we need to do is cross out any permutation where any object is in the same position as the original. So here I have A, which is in the same position as the original. If you track down anything that has B in the second position, we need to cross off. C, cross this off, and you can see there is only two permutations where all the objects are not in the same position as the original. So subfactorial three is two. Using your knowledge now, can you explain to me why subfactorial one is zero? Nice.